Hello, my name is Blake Leeper. I'm a U.S. Paralympic athlete, future Olympic hopeful, and I was born without legs. Today, my topic is my adversity is my advantage. And the reason why I say that is because I am one of the fastest men in the world. And the reason why I feel like I became one of the fastest men in the world is because through the adversity that I faced in my life that's give me the mindset to accept the challenges, to face the obstacles, to overcome the adversity, to turn it into my advantage. So today I'm going to give you a few tips through various few stories that's impacted in my life that hopefully that you can take away to, real, to realize that, wow, you know what? My adversity is my advantage. It started out in, on June 4th, 2018 in Czech Republic, Prague. Um, I just came back from a trip from Latvia, having a race, a track meet where I ran the 400 and the 200, and I land in Prague and I have my final race of year before I go back home. The crowd was, was packed, the stadium was excited, and of me being the only disabled athlete there, um, the eyes were on me. I had lane six and, and, and the, the guy from Czech Republic had lane five and they call out my name. I get kind of the pity claps. They call out his name. The crowd goes crazy. We get into the blocks and all you hear is on your marks, get set. Bah! As we start running and I'm coming Coming in, I'm in dead last, being the only amputee there. My start's not the best, and I, you know, I go from last, and from last I go to fifth, and then from fifth I go to fourth, and I'm in third. Then I, I come off and hit the 200 meter mark. Then I go from second. Then at the four, at the 300 meter mark, I'm in first. And from first, I just carry on to the end of the race, and I win the race. The crowd explodes. Everybody's going crazy. Oh my gosh! I look at the time in 44.42. What? That's not only a PR and a world record for me and the disabled community, but that's the top six fastest time in the world. I was so excited. I was doing interviews. I was taking pictures that night. Everybody was congratulating me. This was the most exciting moment in my life, but it was only four days later that I received a letter from the World Athletics Committee, a division of the Olympics that said, Mr. Leaper, because you ran so fast and because you ran so fast in your blades, we have to disqualify your time. And we feel like you have an unfair advantage. What? Unfair advantage? That, that doesn't make sense. This, is, this, this isn't fair. What, what, do you, what do you mean? And as my frustration build, and not only me, but my team, because all the hard work that we put in to get to this moment, I was upset. I was mad. I was angry trying to understand their view of just how could a man without legs have an unfair advantage in a foot race against men with legs, the fastest runners in the world. But as my DQ times left the, their, their list and as I seen my, my name vanish from that top 10 spot, I went to some self-reflecting. I, 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 I kind of dove in to try to see their viewpoint, to see how I could have an unfair advantage in it. And, and after days and unsleepless nights going through that process, it hit me. It dawned on me. <laughs> I do have an advantage, but it's not my legs. It has nothing to do with my blades. My advantage is my mindset. My advantage is the fact that I was born less than, that I had a fight from day one. And, and today I'm gonna give you a few tips by using a few stories that people that have impacted in my life to show you how you can use your adversity as your advantage. I think back and I start back to the day that I was born, 1989, where the doctors came in and rushed me out the room and they came back and have a conversation with my mother and father. They said, Mr. and Mrs. Leeper, I'm sorry, but your baby boy Blake is born missing both of your legs. You know, you know, Mr. Leeper, I know you love sports and, and I know you, my, you can only imagine my dad was so happy having his second Baby boy son being born, he had the gloves, you know, he, he had the basketball, he was ready for baby boy Blake to be born. But he was hit with this tragic news that your son's never gonna walk. He was hit with this tragic news that your son's never gonna play sports. He's never gonna run, jump, and he's gonna be bound in a wheelchair his whole life. And when my parents tell me this story, I, I get upset myself. I'm like, well, well, well dad, who, 
who did you hit? Like, <laughs> mom, who'd you cuss out? I know you didn't take that, you know? And I asked that question over and over and over to him, and every single time, they give me the same answer. They said, Blake, the day that you was born, yes, we was nervous when they rushed you back into the room. But the second they brought you back in, we didn't see all the things that you was missing, but we seen the beauty inside of you. And in that moment, we decided to do two things. First, we decided to stick together as a family, as a unit. And second, we decided to keep a positive attitude towards the whole situation. And the fact that they made those decisions in that moment is what saved my life. That set the trajectory up for me moving forward, right? One of my favorite quotes is from Charles Swindle. And he says, life is 10% of what you're dealt with and 90% on how you deal with it. And in that situation that my parents were going through, that 10% was the fact that, yes, their baby boy was born missing both of his legs. That 10% was the fact of the diagnosis and the prognosis that the doctors gave them in that moment said, look, He's never going to walk. He's never going to run. But they realized that they still have 90% to raise me right. They realized they had 90% to instill happiness and goodness inside of me from day one that regardless of my disability, they're going to love me. They're going to protect me, right? So I ask you and I, and I, and I, I, I question you and say, what, what, what 10% are we more focused on and, and, and led it to overcome us? What 10% do we think is so big? What, 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 what disability, what adversity do you think is, is so big that we only forget that it's only 10%? <laughs> we forget that we still have 90% to show the world what we truly can do. We still forget that we have 90% to wake up each and every day to put a smile on our faces to say, you know what? I still have 90% to go and attack the world. I, when, I, when, I, when I compare, you know, the, the 90 and the 10, you know, I, I, I think about the artists like, like, like Stevie Wonder, or, or the artist like, like, like Ray Charles, who was, you know, have this experience blindness and, but still be successful in the, in the music industry. And I, and I wonder if, if they focused on that 10%, would they be in the situation they was in today? Huh? If they focused on the, on the 10%, would they still be able to make beautiful music like they do today? Huh? But if you look at their lives and the choices that they made through, through their music, through their composing, even though with the disability, even though with not being able to even see the keys, they still was able to change the world. You know, every day that I woke up, my mother would come to my room and she would look at me. She would say, Blake, you have two disabilities. Two. There's nothing we can do about it. We can't negate it. We can't forget about it. We have to identify it. We have to acknowledge it. Two disabilities. But you have a thousand other abilities that make you a special person. You have a thousand other abilities <laughs> that allow you to be who you are. And, I, and I, I, that sticks to me, right? That sticks in the back of my brain. And I, and I feel like, you know, when, when Ray Charles or, or Stevie Warner goes to the Keys, they, they focus on a thousand other abilities. So tip one is focus on your thousand abilities that you have as a special human being. Focus on the amazing talents that you possess within yourself that we've been blessed with. And, and, and as I move forward, I, I think about tip two. My second tip is, is you must challenge your adversity, right? You must challenge. I think about the time I was playing T-ball. I was about four or five years old and, and, and being very young and the only disabled child on my t-ball team, which is for like baseball for little kids, <laughs> I wanted to hit a home run. And the reason why I wanted to hit a home run so I can be accepted, so I can be embraced, so people would, so my teammates would cheer for me, right? And I remember I'm going to the plate and I, and I take my three practice swings, right? One, two, and on the third swing, I hit the ball as far as I can. The, the ball starts flying. I get so excited. <laughs> I forget to run, right? So, so I'm running to first base, and, and on my way to first, I, 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 I run to second, and I, I, I look over to my teammates, and my teammates are jumping for me. They're yelling for me. They're like, run, Blake, run. Like, this is the moment I was waiting for. Like, this is it. They're cheering for me. They're, they're accepting me. They're embracing me. Then on my way to, to, to second, to third, my leg falls off. Boop. Man, I eat dirt. 
My leg falls off. <sighs> the kid comes over and tags me out. <laughs> what kid? We're tagging another kid out missing his legs. I have no idea, but it's, it was it's a rough T-ball league. It was a rough T-ball league. And as I laid there in the dirt, I was, I was mad at myself. I was mad at life. I was mad at the situation. And I can remember questioning, like, this isn't fair. I don't get this. I don't deserve this. Why me? Right? Why me? Why do I have to go through this? But in that moment, my teammates came over and picked me up, and I put my leg back on, and I dusted the dirt off. And as I got older, guys, I realized I wasn't challenging the situation, right? I wasn't fighting back. Instead of saying, why me? I need to flip it. I need to reverse it. I need to say, why not me? I'm meant for this. Why not me? I'm strong enough for this. Why not me? I'm smart enough for this. In that moment, you know, times I think about Hugh Her. The, the professor at MIT who lost his legs in, in a climbing accident. To, to lose his legs and to come back and, and, and to build his own legs and be a professor at MIT and even design legs that I wear today. He, he, he accepted the challenge. He rose to the challenge. That even though that life threw a curveball in his situation, he accepted it and embraced it. And by that, he's changed Many lives, including myself. I think about Rudy Garcia Tolson, the first double leg amputee above the knee to complete an Ironman. <laughs> 16 hours of, of competition, 16 hours of swimming, running, and biking. And, 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 and when he was asked, like, Rudy, Rudy, how, how did you complete this? How did you do this? It must have been hard. He looked at the report and said, look, I was born without legs. <laughs> My life's been hard. The whole time for 21 years with 16 hours oh okay I get it so everything that you've gone through in your life everything that you endured all the hardship is preparing for, preparing you for that next mission that next goal so 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 it's happening for you and and and, 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 and not to you that's it yeah it's happening for you and not to you so you must challenge the adversity you must step up to the plate and say well why not me I'm meant for this. Why not me? I'm strong enough for this. And my third and last point, self-deceptance. I remember when I went to my first middle school dance and this first middle school dance, I had this outfit, but it was a jersey and some shorts that my, my parents bought specially for me that I went out of town to get it. And I was kind of contemplating, should I wear the shorts? Cause if I do, they'll see my legs and they will point and laugh at me. And, I was kind of confused, but I ended up waking up, the, waking up the next morning and deciding, like, I'm going with the outfit. I'm going to wear my shorts. So I wear my shorts and my jersey, and I go to the middle school dance, expecting everybody to, to, to stare at me in my jersey and be excited, like, wow, did you get, where'd you get that jersey from? But the second I walked into the middle school dance, everybody was looking at my legs. Everybody was staring at my legs. They was pointing at my legs. And everywhere, everywhere I walked around for that middle school dance, nobody asked me about my jersey. Man, I went, I went home that night and I cried. I was so upset. I was so defeated. I, I, I was just, tears were coming down my face. And I, and I finally had to pick myself back up and walk up to the mirror. And, and as, as bad as that night was, it was probably one of the, the most powerful moments in my life because I had to accept myself. Tip number three, acceptance. I had to look at myself and, tell, and, and say, this is who you are. It's not going to change. Things are not going to change. You're always going to be a double-leg amputee. You're always going to be pointed at, stared at. So you have to accept yourself, your flaws and all. And it's kind of crazy to think about. I can remember when I met Ruben Martin, a young 17-year-old from Long Beach. <laughs> crazy to say that, you know, he was on his way home from a graduation party. And on his way home from the graduation party, a, drive -by sh a driver came by in a drive-by shooting, sprayed the block. Ruben was hit with a stray bullet and rushed to the hospital, but coming to find out, he, he lost his leg in the process. And the crazy thing about it, you know, me and Rudy Garcia Tosin being roommates, we get the phone call, we say, hey, would you guys mind coming up to meet Ruben, to talk to Ruben? Cause he's not doing so well. He was a he was a a, pro, a profound baseball pitcher on his way to college 
to pitch and now that he lost his legs, he feels like he's never going to be able to play baseball again. He's never going to be able to pitch again. So me and Rudy hop in the car and we drive up to go meet Ruben. And as we go meet Ruben, I can see his, you can see the bandage and and where his leg was bleeding and, and he was on his crutches and we, and we show up and, and, and we, and we show him our legs and, and our medals. And we talk about the experiences and the stories that I share with you today and let him know that his adversity is his advantage. And as we're talking to him, Ruben stands up and, and, and tears just come, starts coming down his, his face and just uncontrollably, he just starts crying. But, but there was, I've seen those tears before. That was the same tears that I had when I had to go home from that middle school dance and accept myself. And, and, and even though there was tears of sadness, it was tears eventually of, of joy and heading in the right direction. So, so I, I ask you, what have you faced in your life and, and what adversity are, are, are you going through today that's got, that, that brings tears to your face, that, that brings you to your knees, the thinking that you can't move forward, but I, I'm here to tell you that your adversity is your advantage. The challenges that you face, the, the obstacles that you endure is making you stronger. The, the courage that it's going to take is, is preparing you for that next mission. And you, have, you must remember that it's happening for you and not to you. And I can remember sitting on the couch doing an interview one time with Tom Bayou and he asked, Blake, do you ever wish that you was born missing both of your legs? Or do you ever wish that you had both of your legs? Do you ever wish you never had to go through this? Do you ever wish that you never had to endure all this hardship? And I looked at him and said, honestly, no. And take another step forward, I'm thankful that I'm born missing both of my legs. I'm thankful. Because, because I, I was born missing both of my legs, it got to show me how strong I truly can be. Because I'm missing both of my legs, I got to learn how to fight back at an early age. So I encourage you, whatever adversity that you're facing today, accept it. Whatever challenge that you're going to face tomorrow, embrace it. Because it's going to make you stronger. So when I look at the committee, when they said, Blake, you can't run, you have an advantage. I can look at him and say, my advantage is my mindset. My advantage is my struggle. My adversity is my advantage. Thank you so much.